Welcome to Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, and joining me tonight for the very first time, welcome Andy Hunsucker. Hello, everybody. How's it going, man? It's going really well. Uh, thanks for jumping on. Um, it. I just kind of want to share a little background for everybody because it's a very roundabout way to how Andy ended up on this show. Yes. Um, Andy is actually the cousin of Cole, who helped me found Horrible Night. And I first heard about Andy because you you have uh, a podcast of your own, the IU Cinema Podcast. Yep. And uh, listened to that for a while and um, eventually ran into you at a screening of our Tetris movie that we did with uh, Indie Film Fest. And, yep. Um, but somewhere in all that time frame, I never caught on to the fact that you were a big gamer. I, you know, it was I, my, it's kind of cyclical, you know, when I started the cinema podcast, I had to kind of focus on that and do that. And I, I didn't play as many, uh, you know, video games, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I, I, I go all the way back to the NES era and I, my original Game Boy and all that. I still have all of my original Game Boy carts. I don't yeah. have my original Game Boy, but I have those carts and a Game Boy Advance. So I could play some Metroid 2 right now if I wanted to. Do it. Just right now. <laughs> I could as well, but I did have to repurchase all those in the last year. So for, yeah. for horrible night out events, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you and I could we could pick each other's brain quite a bit on the, um, the history of gaming a bit. I mean, as evidenced uh, you and uh, Jason. So we, that's the other weird part of the story. Jason started uh, kind of jumping into some of our live streams and we, we got to know him and realized that he was in, he was also in Indiana and we were talking some more and figured out that he knew you and uh, you guys are working Jason. on, working on your own uh, evolution of gaming podcast, which we've helped kind of partner to help promote, you, promote that. So yeah, Jason is one of, is like one of my best friends and my, close colleague essentially in all of my extracurricular activities so um yeah cool um is there anything else going on i know you you've got your own youtube channel you want to talk up anything that you're working on um i do and uh i'll talk about one thing that is going to be on my channel tomorrow when we talk about the game of the week um but uh you know my big series is prison architect if you guys like uh prison architect uh, that's the one I play the most. That's the one that people sort of come to my channel for, I think, at least <laughs> from as far as I can tell. It's the most popular one. Uh, so the uh, the uh, the link there is youtube.com slash mangler103. Um, and uh, just something I started back in like February just to sort of put myself on a schedule because life was getting too crazy of like, I don't have time to do this, but it's something I really want to do. And it was just this sort of thing. I was like, you know what? If I put myself on a schedule, if I, you know, have a goal every day of like I need to put up a video every day, then I'll actually play the games. And it's sort of <laughs> led to a gaming renaissance for me. So I've actually played more games in the last six months than I probably have in the previous two or three years. <laughs> so you're not so, so much doing it for your audience; it's doing it to force yeah, yourself to play video all. games. Not at all. I could care less if the audience <laughs> pays attention. I really couldn't. Uh, you know, there's been many. There's been a couple games that have been pretty popular on my channel that I was just like, "No, I'm not playing this anymore. <laughs> it's not a good game. <laughs> that's, not that's, worth it's it. important to have that line. I've seen people stick exactly. through that, and you know, there are a lot of Prison uh, Architect was that close, that close, uh, but they sort of fixed some things, and uh, yeah. So now, uh, my channel would have cratered if without Prison Architect. So I'm glad I found a way to. Is that still hang early up access? Yeah, it's still okay. beta, and it's a very expensive beta as well. It's like thirty bucks. Um, it's not even, no, not even beta. It's alpha. Um, it's thirty bucks for the the game. So uh, it's it's a commitment, you know. And I bought it early on, and I didn't even think like, oh, everyone's gonna want to watch me play this. It just turned out. I started out with that in Kerbal Space Program, mm-hmm. uh, and everyone like went crazy over uh, Prison Architect and loved it and. It's still it's not as popular for me as it once was, but it's still by far my most popular game that I play. Cool. So, um, and then beyond beyond that, uh, you know, if if the world hadn't come together before this, it sounds like we might actually run into each other at Gen Con this weekend. It, we might we might do that. Uh, I am heading up there. I'll be up there Saturday, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going up. 
I'll be there Friday and then sporadically throughout the rest of the weekend. We got a lot of stuff going yeah. on at home, but Friday mm-hmm. will be my big day. I'm actually going to meet up with our buddy Josh Lee and cuz he's my he's my like tabletop guru. He's the one that yeah. opened the door for me last year. So I'll be wandering around with him and having him tell me what looks cool and me nodding yeah. in agreement because I'm completely <laughs> ignorant but love the scene. Yeah. So, uh, what are you excited about for Gen Con this year? Uh, just going there. Um, I've got a big pile of board games in my room that I don't get to play anymore because, you know, people got married, people moved away. Yeah. And so I just don't have, yeah, I got, you know, I had a game group for like four years every Saturday. We would get together. We would show up at my house at like 11 a.m. and play till midnight. And that was awesome. But then, you know, life gets in the way. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, I, I find that a game group is a really sort of intimate sort of gathering, uh, and I don't want to just sort of randomly put on Facebook, hey, everybody, come play games at my house, because yeah. that doesn't sound like fun to me. Right. Um, and I'm just like, I don't like this person. I, <laughs> I don't want ta- to go that far. I want to find people that I like to play games, not just to play games. That's not the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, I last year I really enjoyed walking through the uh, sort of dealers room and sort of seeing what new games were out because I'm not really connected to that world anymore as much. Um, I bought a couple of things uh, that actually got a little bit of play time and Jason's actually been bugging me to start up the game group again and I would like to, but it's just like the last time we tried to do it, it it, it worked for like two or three weeks, mm-hmm. like three times in a row, and then it was just done. <laughs> so it was kind of like yeah. It's, it, weird, it's, it's weird. It's weird stuff like that that are hobbies that that do take a lot of time. It's hard mm-hmm. to schedule them because people don't want to schedule their hobbies. But at the same yeah. time, if you don't, you end up going months without playing. So exactly. I mean, we but, were super hyped about Gen Con last year, and we had a we had a game night right before and a game night right after, and then it was it was four or five months before we played again yeah. together again. It takes a serious commitment. I had my, my friend, uh, I have a friend who lives out in California and she was like, why don't you just like say, why don't you guys just come by if you want to? And if not, it's okay. And I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> you just don't understand. That would never work. No one will ever show up. No one will ever show up. Um, I'm looking forward to my favorite part last year was just getting live demos of games. Um, oh, we, yeah. ha- we had the first two we did, we got kind of lucky. Like sometimes, you know, the companies will bring a couple spokespeople or, or marketing folks or like more business types that are actually walking you through mm-hmm. uh, the games. But we actually got a couple demos like from the like the primary designer of the game, and that was just really interesting to tap into their brains. Um, yeah. We played a game called Level Seven last year, and it, it's got like a sequel or 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 an expansion to that that. Uh, Josh is already hyping me up for so. Um, yeah. jo- Josh and I will do a podcast next week. I'm probably gonna invite some others, um, recapping how Gen Con went, and expect a couple uh, articles as well from him, uh, reviewing um, some of his games. You might actually see him pop up more on the site if I give him the excuse that he can cover tabletop <laughs> stuff. So, um, dang, that sounds good. But let's move on to video games. Um, this is an interactive podcast. Uh, we pose our questions of the week on Facebook every week and ask our live ch- chat audience also um, to answer those questions. And you can join us every Thursday night at 10 p.m. on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. And our first question, is, as always, is what is your game of the week? Andy, what you got? Well, I, was, I, I, I still am a big fan of Kerbal Space Program. Mm-hmm. And this is a game where you sort of build rockets and you launch them into space and you orbit planets and land on other planets. And it's a lot of fun. I found another game in that same vein that is definitely my game of the week. It is called Take on Mars. Um, it I is have a, a song that could take. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, in this game, you launch rovers onto Mars and drive them around. Except it's not like you don't you you get a realistic view of what the technology would allow. So you land on the planet and you literally have this like 2 megapixel black and white camera and you can't see anything but you're expected to complete missions and take pictures of this ridge and uh, get a soil sample and you know, you you can uh, add your own uh, modules to it to do other missions, like get a radiation sample, or uh, at a certain point you get wheels to put on it so you can drive it around a little bit. And 
it's just I love the idea of this game. Like it's got a budget, so you can sort of pick which mission you want to go to. Like I want to visit this crater, and it's worth this much to the people who are paying for the research. And uh, it's totally baffling, <laughs> um, but it's great. So. Uh, the interesting I'm, I'm gonna put up a video of this on my YouTube channel uh, on Friday Friday the 16th mm-hmm. and you'll be able to watch me play it um, it's a little bit of like a feel around in the dark sometimes literally because yeah. again you're in the dark on Mars and you've you're you're controlling it as if you were controlling a rover from earth okay. and all you have are like these controls in front of you and it doesn't necessarily you, make sense have you thought about like shaving your head into a mohawk to see if you can control the rover better Yes, actually, okay. <laughs> I I did consider that because <laughs> um, that was the, always the <laughs> always the thing with some of our recent actual space missions is that's true. What looking at the, some of the rock stars they've tried to boost up from NASA, but also just like the budget side and the technology side, like mm-hmm. you know that some of these things they're, they've launched into space. You know, the iPhone's more powerful than that than oh yeah, than what's floating out there. So well, that's just really launch, interesting. You launch it today, and it doesn't get there for like two years or something like that and it's like of course the technology is going to be worse off you know (laughs) it's like of course so So, i love i love the idea of the game is there anything beyond the exploration like what's the kind of the end goal like what's a successful mission or okay all right (laughs) i mean basically you go up there with like some goals and basically it's it's almost like a bounty system where it's like here is what will here's what people will pay for so if you can do if you can get a soil sample and an oxygen sample and take pictures of this crater, then you uh, you'll get this amount of money and then you can go on the next mission. Mm. Um, but as far as like an end game, I can't really tell. It might okay. go on forever. But it is it's an early access game. It's on Steam right now, and uh, it's really polished. Like I, a lot of stuff, like a lot of little graphical touches, like when you you can actually walk around the the, the control center, and you can walk into the uh, uh, you have to walk into like a clean room to go into the building where you uh, 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 build the, the 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 rovers or whatever. And it's really uh, there's a lot of nice little touches in it. Um, there's also a very scary button that says "Play the game in real time," which I'm terrified to click. <laughs> as I think. They're literally going to make me wait two years to play oh, the next part of the game. <laughs> I'm not going to click that button. But... You have to leave the computer on. <laughs> exactly. I don't think that would. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think my computer would stay on for two years. Like if I really thought about that, that would. Yeah, there's got to be a power <laughs> outage sometime, right? Yeah. Like at least once or a blip. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's interesting. A lot of the guys in my office have been uh, into Kerbal Space Program since the Steam sale. Yeah. Um, and didn't really know if there's anything else kind of like that. And I was looking up hey. a little bit on this game before the show, and just was really impressed by some of the the screenshots, the horizons yeah. on Mars, and that kind of stuff's really cool. Mm-hmm. So. Kerbal Space Program is kind of like a cartoony version of space flight, but still on the realistic side. Take on Mars feels like a much more realistic version okay. of a space program, but it's a very narrow view. It's like you just do the rovers. That's it. Gotcha. So. Oh, it'd be kind of funny if some of the if Kerbals randomly showed up on Mars, though. That would be Crossover. amazing. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> this is already a, my favorite game of the year, so oh, wow. that would just take yeah. it to the next oh, level. Yeah. I just love the idea of this game. That's cool. Um, games of the week from the community. Uh, I don't know if this counts from Cole, um, and I only know what this is because it's the, one of the few books I've ever read in my entire life, but his game of the week <laughs> is Ender's Game because he actually Ooh, he actually only that's... just now read the book. So trailers that's for the movie smart. look great, though. So <laughs> I'm excited. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just I don't like the author of the book, yeah, oh, so I, yeah. I feel bad about supporting him. Yeah. But yeah. it is a I've, great story. I have to block that out because he's been especially an asshole this week. Yeah. Um, but Jordan's game of the week, Dragon's Crown. I'm assuming he didn't pick up a Vita and is playing on a PS3. I'm still working my way through that. Uh, happy, happy Matt is going old school, playing some Sympathy tonight. That's always a winner. Krug Dog is always expanding our horizons. He's his game of the week is Neo Scavenger. I don't, I don't know this game. I never heard of that. All right, have to look into that. Um, Gifford and Coop are both into Charlie Murder this week, which I'll be playing live after the show. 
Uh, Ethan, of course, is absorbed and will probably never leave New Vegas ever again. <laughs> um, yeah, but- I'm doing X. Ex- I'm doing a, a, a recent classic series on my YouTube channel where, like Saturdays, like no one watches anything on Saturdays anyway. So I just throw up whatever I feel like playing. Uh, lately, I've been doing uh, Arkham Asylum, which mm-hmm. I love. Arkham Asylum. Fallout New Vegas kind of fits in that slot, so that might be an excuse to start playing Fallout oh, New Vegas again. <laughs> you guys can have your own New Vegas podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I want to. I really want to play that game, but like if I, I'm in the middle of Skyrim, I don't. I don't want to jump to that afterwards. No. So, no. Um, hold oh, off. Hold Krug, off. Krug Dog's got a link to the demo in chat. I'll post that in our show notes. Uh, for Dean's game of the week is Ducktales Remastered. Glad someone's loving it. Um, I'm looking forward to playing it soon. Uh, yeah. Adeline is playing Dead Space 1 for the first time. She's only played Dead Space 2. So enjoy that because it's, it is a – now even looking back, it's a very unique horror experience that um, yeah. I appreciate with age for sure. Um, and then Ghost and Aaron and myself all share the same game of the week. Payday 2 came out of nowhere for me this week. We You jumped in on our uh, yep. four-player – match of that uh earlier in the week and seriously this wasn't even on my radar like i think i confused the original payday um with there was like another what was that failed mmo um i had a similar I think I know what you're talking about yeah, yeah. But it, i got it confused and didn't know what it was but essentially i just relate this that this is left for dead but heists like yeah. it's it is you're all about crime. play this multiplayer don't play this solo play it with three other friends and uh, first-person shooter made by one of the offshoots of the Starbreeze team, which um, those guys are known for the Riddick series and the Darkness, um, and it it looks fantastic. I think everything. The, uh, oh yeah, the world is well realized, and it um, controls great. It feel the the guns feel like they're you they know got some weight, serious weight yeah. to them. Um, it the, feels right. It, it always feels like what well, well, even though. I don't have the skill, and I will always bring down any group that I'm with. It feels like these heists are ac- you're actually able to pull them off without getting caught, but I'm assuming. I think so. <laughs> I'm assuming I things so. will always go wrong when I'm involved. But yeah, not not for me either. But um, yeah, I, I agree. I did not. Um, I did not uh, play. I. You guys were talking about it in the chat, like you're going to play it afterwards, and I sort of looked at it. And I was like, that looks kind of fun. Like maybe I can jump in on this and. Um, I put up two videos on my YouTube channel of this, one solo and one with our group session. Yeah. So you guys can actually compare the amount of fun, and it I think was, you'll find that four players is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was also interesting to see it through your perspective because yeah. I was just seeing me screwing up all over the place. Um, <laughs> and the other best way, if you don't, um, if you haven't seen this yet, just I'm assuming I would love to, like, I need to go back and read some interviews with the developers, but, like, Essentially, it looks like they watched the intro to the to the Dark Knight and said, "We want to make that bank heist a game." Oh yeah, <laughs> and, totally. Down and to the masks they're wearing. Absolutely, and they yeah. they they've pulled it off. It is this is this is awesome. Um, my only question is, and I don't know if how much you've explored in this space, but we've been playing a lot of Planet Side Two and Warframe on the site in the last year. Both free to play games, both very high quality games, and that was the mm. only thing that struck me about this experience is. I didn't mind paying the thirty bucks or whatever it was for the game, but I'm trying to figure out what what separates this um, from some of these other higher quality free to play games, mm-hmm. um, especially when you look at um, you know there's not really a, I don't think there's a microtransaction of interface in the game. You unlock a ton like of it. stuff, but oh, it yeah. looks like that would have actually kind of been in place, um, and I'm, I'm, I'd be curious to see how those end up comparing in the long run um, versus. Yeah. To see which which games I actually stick with. Yeah, I, I haven't played Planet Side or Warframe, uh, but uh, it does seem like something that could have occurred. Like that could have been a branch they took. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. know, different masks, different costumes. You know, goes to pl- who's kind of our payday two unofficial pro around yeah. here, uh, saying there are no microtransactions in payday two. So it was just it was just something I noticed um, in passing because I went back and updated Warframe almost right after I finished playing Payday 2. So I was just like, I'll be curious to see which games I keep going back to. So, yeah. uh, But great first impression. And definitely check it out if you've got uh, friends that want some, some co-op shooting because uh, there's nothing else that really feels like it. This is this is actually kind of what I wanted out of Monaco. I wanted This feels like 
more there's more strategy involved with this and yeah. but it's still fun when it gets gets super chaotic. And honestly, they could have just named the game Left for Dead except not zombies but crime and I would have bought it. Like they <laughs> yeah. could have named the game that and I would have bought it cuz I like Val- Left for Dead but I'm so sick of zombies. Yeah. And getting to like do bank heists in a Left for Dead style game, I'm like done. Yeah. Like absolutely. you don't have to sell me anymore. Uh, moving on to highlights from HorribleNight.com. Uh, what caught your attention? Um, I really like this article uh, that's uh, – let me see who wrote it. Uh, Justin Gifford wrote mm-hmm. it. Um, and I, I don't know Justin, but uh, he apparently has some law training. Yes. Which is good because every time I read something about the law, uh, it makes me think, does this person really know what they're talking about? Because I don't understand it. And I just have to assume that they know what they're talking about. I think he knows what he's talking about. This is an article about um, EA got sued by a guy who programmed the original Madden game. That they had an agreement that he was going to get, you know, uh, co- he was going to get paid for every game that used a derivation of his code. And EA said, you know, around '98, they were like, "Okay, we're done with your code." And he was like, "Cool." And then, <laughs> 15, 20 years later. He sort of looks around and is like, wait a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not true. Um, but this goes into it sort of it sort of it's a very well researched article and it pulls in a lot of information from another article uh, and talks about that and then analyzes that article's an- analysis and then comes back with his own analysis and really <laughs> explains the issue and, and explains what's actually happening he in sent, a way that I can understand. He sent me an email. He's like, um, I have a 2400 word news article for you. <laughs> I was just like, whatever, man. Like it, it, I'd read a few summaries of this, uh, prior to his article, but, um, seeing him break it down made me better understand uh, where it was coming from, and exactly. I, I always enjoyed Justin's uh, Justin's breakdowns. He's done a few kind of just lawsuits and gaming related pieces, and um, I think he has his eyes set on a couple more here in the future. Um, I'm all for it. I, I'll read them. <laughs> uh, my highlight: I just posted it uh, on the site on Thursday. Uh, is the fact that you can get the Charlie Murder soundtrack for free off of Ska Studios Bandcamp page. Um, the th- if you know anything about Scott Studios, it's a two-man shop, a husband and wife, and um, the Silvas are just incredible artists, and James in particular is also just an incredible, he's an incredible musician and does all the music and design and code for all of his games. Um, they've also made uh, the Dishwasher series, as well as uh, I made a game of Zombies in it, which is my favorite $1 game of all time. Um, yeah. And also my favorite one dollar song of all time because of Ooh. how that was tied in. But um, they, yeah, like I said, they released the soundtrack for this game. Charlie Murder is a, a brawler starring a punk rock band, so you kind of know where the soundtrack's going from there. And mm-hmm. the fact that they make it, <laughs> they make it pay whatever you want is just that's that such a nice nod to the community. Um, but you know, if you if you like Scott Studios at all and know his style, I think you'll the, the music will appeal to you and help support the game and, and Scott Studios directly through this, so uh, mm-hmm. kind of cool. Um, moving on to Worst of the Week and Gaming. Um, mine, and it looks like Cole from the community, uh, we both were kind of cringing at GameStop claiming that uh, they were pricing... New new releases of Xenoblade Chronicles at market value by pricing them at eighty nine dollars a piece. Um, so wow. what they've what GameStop has started doing is uh, is finding some of these like smaller releases and releasing another batch of those games and calling them vintage titles and and charging whatever they want for them. So that's ah. how they're that's how they are uh, justifying this. But just the fact that. They're charging ninety dollars for Xenoblade Chronicles is just ridiculous. Um, yeah, there's rumors they might be doing this to the Metroid Prime trilogy release as well. Yeah, um, we have a uh, about two three years ago a uh, local game store opened up in Bloomington called Game World. Um, a guy just got tired of running a video a, a video rental place and got yeah. out of that business and moved into the video game store business, and I have not been to that GameStop one time since that place opened, and I've been so happy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's basically GameStop except locally run, which is wonderful. It's that's, the best. 
yeah, I try to, we've got still a, a smaller chain, but I try to buy my stuff from the exchange here locally when I have the choice. So, mm-hmm. um, from chat, uh, Matt is not a fan of bats this week. And mm-hmm. I'm assuming that is from his, all of his spelunking, um, Gifford, like I said, has his eyes on another lawsuit or legal related, um, situation in gaming uh as there's a bill going through uh congress right now um about the study of video game game violence and how it relates to aggression and apparently it's getting a good response which is uh um not not cool (laughs) yeah Uh, krug dog uh watched one of the recent splinter cell blacklist trailers and noticed that yes indeed sam fisher's voice has changed no more michael ironside and sam is much younger Huh. Yeah, so that's a rude awakening if you didn't know. I'm that. not into those games, but I can understand how changing a voice like that yeah. is. And it's not like you go you, you're going up to uh Kiefer Sutherland or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um this one's kind of split. Uh Coop actually has this on his worst of the week is the Humble Origin bundle. Uh, that was kind of I was kind of grossed out by that the EA's bundle, but yeah. only because I just I just hate Origin. I really just <laughs> I've got it for SimCity, and I haven't installed any other yeah. thing. So, But great games on, on that package, and we'll come back to that. Uh, Ethan mm-hmm. has been having a lot of problems with Twitch TV this week, so that's his worst thing in gaming. Literally, it, as he was trying to stream earlier today, his his internet provider in, in Berlin, Germany, was the only one having issues with Twitch that day. And... <laughs> I think the world is out to get this man. He, he just wants to play video games for all you people, and Twitch won't let him. Um, Aaron linked to a another a recent piece from Polygon uh, just about um, gamers being dicks and, and, if, and affecting game developers. And um, I haven't read into the article or, or I give more info, but um, I'll post a link to that as well. Um, this has to be... I had to have got this switched up. Hold on one second. For Dean, I have it listed that the international is his worst of the week. That cannot be correct. This man loves the international. Um, and for those of you that don't know, what the the international three uh, was last week. That was Dota 2's world championship. So, oh, sorry. He his worst of the week is that the international is over because he watched a ton of it. Uh, <laughs> so now it makes sense. So um, wait, so, no, 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 Ryan. I, tell me after the show what Dota is because I don't know what okay. that is. Either. <laughs> It's just the the big up the big up and coming uh, MOBA multiplayer game, like the esports game that's going to take everything over. But okay. go back, go back, and I've heard that from a production um, production point of view, just watching how they put this broadcast together of just uh, of all all of these matches has done done really well. They somebody compared oh. it to like Olympic coverage, the way they were having. Oh, that. nice! Like find stories from all these teams that were competing and that kind of thing. So, nice. uh, but supposedly Valve did a really uh, classy job with it. So, and esports is traditionally kind of very hard to watch <laughs> if you're not into yeah. it. Um, Adeline's worst of the week is she doesn't have enough time to play all the games she wants. So we can all relate there. Oh um, yes. Andy, what's your worst of the week? Well, uh, this is, this is going to take a second. So g- give me a second to build up to this. Um, so around this time last year, I got so sick of iPhone gaming, yeah. uh, and so I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy a handheld system, because uh, I had a DS, and I wasn't really excited about anything that was coming out on the DS, so I was like, I'm either going to get a Vita or a 3DS, and at first I thought, it's got to be a 3DS, right? So I looked at the games on the 3DS, and at that time, it was like a new Mario game, and a new, you know, just all the same games I'd played before except the new version of them on 3DS. And I wasn't really excited about that, so I decided, you know what, I'll get a Vita. Um, didn't end up playing the Vita a ton, but it's still worth a worthwhile system. But I actually went out this week and bought a 3DS. Boom. Yeah, nice. Um, so I was going to talk about how uncomfortable this was to hold as my worst of the week. You look like um, you got some wings on that or something. Yeah, but I got a, a case for it. So <gasps> if you get... If you get this case for it, yeah. I like that. It is genius. It <laughs> is like because this thing, when you're holding it on the bottom, it's too thin, mm-hmm. um, and it it cramps your hands. Like I played it for like Friday and Absolutely. Saturday, 
and I thought I was going to have to like burn it because mm-hmm. my hands were in so much pain. But what I actually want to talk about, my worst of the week, <laughs> the wildly inconsistent quality of the 3D on 3DS oh, okay. games. So, for instance, Animal Crossing New Leaf, the 3D is essentially perfect. It adds a lot to the game. I have it turned up all the way to the full 3D, and it's great. Way to go, Nintendo. (laughs) Yes. Harvest Moon, again, the 3D works. I can keep it full uh, on full, and it works okay, except um, the 3D, just the way you're viewing the angle, it, the three doesn't do anything. It's uh. it, do, it doesn't affect anything. Um, the thing about three D, I, I actually work with a lot of people at IU who are really serious into stereoscopic three D and like the the uh, different uh, you know scientific basis of it mm-hmm. and how it works and why it's effective. Uh, Harvest Moon fails utterly at the effectiveness. <laughs> um, Miracle Mask is pretty bad. Oh, really? Layton, the, the Professor Layton 3D is pretty bad. Um, it's uh, it's very hard. Like, you know, there's a pretty narrow angle of view that you have to look at the 3DS to sort of keep it keep it in in check. Uh, and it just doesn't really work on Professor Layton. It's too hard to keep that angle mm-hmm. uh, going. Um, but the worst of the worst of the worst of the 3D, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. It is completely useless. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate has the worst 3D I've ever seen in anything. I can't leave it on at all. I just have to turn it off completely. <laughs> um, it hurts to even have it up like one notch, like yeah. even the s- tiniest little notch. Uh, otherwise, the game's fun. Just the 3D is completely useless. It doesn't do that- anything. Well, a couple things. First, Monster Hunter's controls were like the ones that almost broke my hands, and that's why I had to get it on the Wii U instead. Yeah. Um, but I just found that I, I will agree that Animal Crossing looks pretty damn good in 3D, but I just I found myself, I just don't even use the 3D at all anymore, and mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like anyone's designing towards it anymore either. It's just gonna yeah. kind of you know, it's a nice system without it. So, yeah. Um, but well, yeah, I just, just, I don't get the point of it most of the time, so. It just seems like Nintendo clearly knows how to do it, and wouldn't they want everyone, th- their unique feature on their premier device, well, let's be honest, yeah. this is the device that's keeping them afloat, and yeah. this is the most unique feature of that device, why don't they want to spread the word and say, here's how you do 3D properly on the 3DS? I think, I mean, they've got some good examples of that, Mario 3D Land is fantastic, at it. Yeah. I've, I've heard good things about, you know, Mario Kart and, you know, Animal Crossing is kind of their most recent one. I don't know how mm-hmm. the new Mario RPG um, looks with it, but um, I just, you know, how you, we all know how 3D has gone from how it was even being pushed by Sony and all the movie makers. Like, that, yeah. that's kind of, that push has gone, gone by the wayside by everybody, so. Um, well, but here's the thing, and I'm going to throw a little film knowledge at you. In China, yeah. 3D is the hugest thing ever. Like you can't release a film in China without it being three three D. That okay, that's interesting. That's a, it's a huge deal in China. So if you're trying to be international, like in America, it's sort of like yeah, stuff that doesn't isn't in three D can still work. In China, it makes a huge difference. Does it make a huge um, difference anywhere else? Do you know? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. Uh, <laughs> India is it likes. I was the like, because they're lot, playing but... pirated three Ds. They're playing. Well, when, for video games, it doesn't, it doesn't work as well. But if you're if you're in a movie theater, it works. That that works great. But I will say, Nintendo's 4D SS. Yeah. Is. <laughs> when the 3D is done right, it's an exceptional experience. It's just that nobody's doing it yeah. properly. Yeah. So it's yeah, sad. It, it yeah, it's definitely the forgotten feature, which is funny because it's in the goddamn name. <laughs> so, um, best of the week. Uh, let's let's go to the community first. Um, I said Coop had it as his worst of the week. Cole has it as as his best of the week. The Humble Origin bundle, um, and Adeline also likes that because she got Dead Space Three for pretty cheap. So, mm. you know, uh, I have personal issues with Origin, but fantastic uh, a group of games. And it, Chat's also saying that EA may not even be taking money out of this. So um, that that's also a bonus. So. Let's see. Gifford and Aaron are excited about uh, the reception Saints Row 4 has gotten. Uh, I think we'll talk a little bit about that. And Matt's excited 
got it actually having money to buy games, and guess what? There's a ton of games coming out this month. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. So, And then Ethan's best of the week in gaming is Friendship. I think he was drunk. Um, <laughs> Verdine's excited about Mike Bithell's uh, new game was announced this week. From he, he made Thomas Was Alone. Uh, game's called Volume. It looks like the VR missions from Metal Gear Solid. Um, looks pretty pretty cool. A lot of people were talking about that, actually. And Coop's excited that Charlie Murder is finally done. That was a very long development cycle for that game. Mm. Um, but let's talk Saints Row and your best of the week. My best of the week is revisiting Saints Row 3. So I bought this on launch day, as I have, I think, with every Saints Row game, including the first one, um, uh, for the 360. So all those other games I played on 360, really? okay. loved it on 360, but I had finished the other two on 360. I never finished Saints Row 3 on 360. Um, wow, and but the story's so good. <laughs> How did you stop? <laughs> well, yeah. I'm okay. revisiting some of those issues that I had with the story. Uh, and uh, basically, I rebought it in the Steam sale a few weeks ago. I don't gotcha. remember how much it was. I think it was like seven fifty or something like that. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll buy that because I want to uh, have a copy that will stick around for a while. And and the uh, uh, so I decided to start replaying it this week because I never finished it. So I was hoping maybe I can just burn through the story missions and get through it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just really looking forward to Saints Row 4. I am the biggest Saints Row fan. I even liked the first game. I was the first person to say that Saints <laughs> Row was better than GTA. I, like, it was I don't, me. I don't know how that happens. I was just like, I don't I don't know who those original Saints Row fans are, because I didn't get in, into it till 3, and like... It just seemed to be the consensus, like, don't don't even worry about knowing what happens in 1 and 2. It just doesn't matter. This game has evolved to just be this yeah. ludicrous open-world game and embrace it for what it is. But um, Volition was actually streaming Saints Row 1 and 2 this week. I, I caught their, some of their Saints Row 1 stream, stream and I'd forgotten that that was a... That was a current generation game. I thought maybe yep. that might have been a tail-end Xbox or PlayStation 2 game, but... No. It looked all right. It looked, I mean, it looked silly. Like, it looked like a silly GTA. This is much more grounded than, say, Saints Row 3 or 4. But Yeah, okay, so here's here's the timeline. So you have GTA 3, okay. and then GTA Vice City, mm -hmm. and then GTA 3 was a little grounded, and then Vice City went a little nuts, right? Right. So yeah. Saints Row continued from the point where Vice City left off. Okay, so... And in GTA San Andreas... Rockstar was like, let's pull this back. Let's make this a little more serious. And then they started making more and more serious games every yeah. time out. Yeah. Saints Row took from Vice City, like Vice City. on <laughs> and just went with it. They, they took it to the logical conclusion. So people who say Saints Row is a ripoff of GTA, you're sort of right, but you're also sort of wrong. Because, <laughs> you know, with San Andreas, Rockstar clearly abandoned the good GTA formula I haven't finished. I haven't even played like more than ten hours of a GTA game since Vice City. Sure. Um, I don't think they're that interesting anymore. They're too yeah. serious. It's like they're not fun. They are not fun to play. Mm -hmm. And Saints Row has always been about what can we do to make this fun to play. So seriously, Saints Row is. It basically goes GTA Three, GTA Vice City, then Saints Row, Saints Row Two, <laughs> Saints, Row 3, Saints Row Three, Saints Row Four. That is the actual way to go. I appreciate that explanation, and um, yes. I, you you might disagree with this because you said they took a couple shots at Saints Row 1 and 2, but if you want to really get hyped for Saints Row 4, I highly recommend reading the Rock Paper Shotgun review. Um, I'm going to pull a quote from the end of this here. Uh, Games have the ability to let us live out such mad, explosive, eccentric nonsense, and yet they almost never do. Saints, 4, Saints Row 4 does, and that makes it incredibly special. Like, that yes. That nails down, like, it's just going to be fun. I'm sure there are critical things I could pick apart with, with it, and it may. I'm more worried that it's going to seem a little bit more samey to Saints Row 3. But you know what? I want more Saints Row 3 plus all this other ludicrous stuff that they're doing. So Honestly, go back to Saints Row 2. That's the best one in the series. Wow. Honestly, wow. Saints Row 2 is the best game in the series by far. That's wow. why I couldn't finish. That's why I never. I lost interest in Saints Row 3 because I was like, this isn't as good as Saints Row 2. It just isn't. I'm sorry. It isn't. 
I don't, have, I don't have words. I don't. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> but I want to see if you're still saying that after Saints Row Four. So we're pretty excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> Chad is also dumbfounded a little bit. Um, I'm gonna my best of the week in gaming. Uh, I, was, I almost call this the worst in the week. So, um, but there's apparently this new company uh, called All You Can All You Can Arcade Rentals, which allows you to rent classic arcade machines. They'll bring them to your house. For $75 a month. And that is awesome. As somebody that does that wants to own a bunch of arcade machines, but I don't want to take care of them. I don't have to do the maintenance. This seems like an awesome service. But I don't live in San Francisco, so I can't get it. So um, yeah. but you know, you have you have your first one. That's that's the silver lining I'm taking. Is maybe someone in the Louisville, Indianapolis area will um, t- also take up this crusade. So <clears throat> But uh, I, I still, I also just kind of want to be there for multiple arcade deliveries just to see how all that is handled because moving one of those things is a pain in the ass. And I wonder, like, <laughs> are they going to have restrictions of you have to be have a you have to be on the first floor? We're not carrying this thing yes. upstairs, <laughs> you know, no winding staircases, that kind of thing. So, um, and then we will get out of here. Our question of the week this week, um, since Gen Con is going on. What board or tabletop game do you think should become a video game? I've got some stuff here. <laughs> so, I like I said, I have a huge pile of board games, so I grabbed a few. To get, I'm going to turn away. Give me one second. Okay. <laughs> so, the first one, this is kind of a comedy option, but maybe like a World of Warcraft. That's, that's, I don't know. That's that, funny. That, that feels right as a, as a video game. That's I don't know. That's funny. <laughs> um, uh, this one right here, this is called Die Macher. Okay. Uh, this is a German game. This is uh, The Maker. Okay. This is a this is a political board game. So you're trying to, like, take over the Senate, essentially. Um, and it's a lot of backroom deals, and it's a lot of, like, I'll support you if you support me, and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, this could be a lot of fun, not as, like, a straight board game. Right. Um, but it's so complex and so deep, it could make a really good video game if you sort of took it out of the board game world and just sort of focused on the theme of it. And I've got one more here. Okay. Uh, This one, Fantasy Flight uh, Games, Mansions of Madness. This one is genius. Okay. Uh, This is a haunted house scenario-based game. Cool. So as you dig through the pieces, what you'll find is there's a bunch of, like, cardboard tiles that signify rooms, and you have sort of like a dungeon master... And as you go from room to room, uh, he sort of lays down tiles to say, here's where you just walked into, and he sets traps on the board. It's sort of like an RPG hybrid, um, but it's a haunted house game. So there's like all sorts of different scenarios where it's like there's a zombie section, and there's witches, and your goal is to like solve whatever it is. And there's a bunch of different scenarios. It would make an excellent video game, cool. uh, you know, where you just sort of you walk into a, a thing you don't know what the solution to the thing is. You've just heard that, oh, there's something strange happening at this house, almost like Scooby-Doo, the video game. Uh, But I think you could be clever about it and find a way to sort of get all the different uh, rooms lined up so that uh, it's kind of seamless. Like you walk into a place, into one door, and it's not the same door you walked in last time. You know, it's like a different place. So that could be interesting. That's cool. Um, I don't have all that much experience with... Uh, recent tabletop games, so I don't really have much to contribute here other than um, a lot of the... What I enjoy about tabletop games is the social aspect, playing with your friends. It's a completely different interaction than even playing local co-op or local multiplayer video games. It's just... It's it's totally different, so trying... That, that side always interests me, but also some of these... Whenever I play these games, I find I still... They all require you to use your imagination, which is fun. But mm-hmm. I would rather see I would I want to see how a video game's gonna interpret this stuff. So I'm really looking forward to diving into uh, Mech Warrior Tactics is currently in beta, uh, but it's based more off the the actual Mech Mech Warrior tabletop game. Um, and then the the two games I've been playing that are they're they're more of the tile based games. Well, one of the tile based games is that is that level level seven game. And then um, my other favorite current favorite is the game called Zombies. Um, and just they, there's there's plenty of games that are kind of, you know, video games are obviously spawned off some of these ideas, but I, I would like to see video games have more of the tabletop game presentation. I'd like to see some of the um, 
the the machine behind the game a little bit more like as far yeah. as like when you're laying out these tiles rather than having a, a dungeon that is already randomly generated for me like show me that process of opening that next tile and like yeah. present it more in a board game fashion and let me have those kind of um stops and starts to talk with my friends rather than being balls the wall action that uh video games they kind of go all or nothing and i'd like something kind of in between yeah there's a lot of good stuff like that on the ipad Oh. Um, there's a great one called you can actually play solo uh, and I can't it's called Elder Sign okay. on the iPad it might be Android 2 as well cool. but it's from the same people that make Mansions of Madness and basically you've got a uh, a uh, basically it's it's like you know you just have a set space and you have to walk from room to room and solve challenges it's basically a dice rolling game and it shows you the dice and everything but it's it's a lot of flavor to cool. it which cool. is very cool but yeah, the, the iPad is the place to go if you want sort of like board game experiences in an electronic format. Gotcha. Cool. Well, I think that's it for the show this week. Andy, really appreciate you jumping on here. Good talking with you. Had a good time. Chat, thanks for participating. And we'll actually, we're going to take a week off next week, I believe, from Top Video Game Podcast. Um, but Night Force Action Report will be back next week. And we will see all of you then.